Hey guys, welcome to Man Medicine, where we talk about how men can optimize their health and escape the collapsing U.S. healthcare system. Well, something has happened that I thought would never happen in the history of my medical career, <laughs> and that thing is that I completely agreed with the hosts of that uh, show called The Doctors. If you're not familiar with it, it's it's like a daytime talk show where there's a small handful of like spray tanned, excessively Botoxed physicians from you know, a number of different specialties where they, they get together and they, you know, they talk about various like quasi medical related topics. It's uh, it's pretty obnoxious. I, I, I can't stomach it, honestly. It's, um, you know, but it seems to be pretty popular. It, in my opinion, it's just like, it's like one step less obnoxious than the, uh, than the Dr. Oz show used to be. <laughs> but, uh, you know, having said that, here is the clip that I came across and I was like, yep, 100% true. And we're gonna talk about it today. So here it is. <laughs> or you can just take some, some shots, like these great deals online. They're wonderful. Four injections, injections online for 75 bucks, one for 25. These are so-called lipotropic or lipo shots for weight loss. <laughs> And the thing is, they work completely like their claim to work, it, right? No doubt about it. Just, I'm going to spend 75 bucks on these lipotropic shots. I'm good to go. It's just going to melt like your f <laughs> up. No. <laughs> if anything, it may be a great placebo. I mean, just like people mm. who swear by vitamin B12 shots and these marketers of these injections, you know, a lot of them came from Europe and the real smooth suave de boner types pushing this you know be beautiful stay youthful with this concoction of vitamins supplements other things like that and it's not to be confused with mesotherapy where and you know they do actually in, inject these vitamins these products into areas small areas of fat that you want to get rid of and our society studied these results american society of plastic surgeons no scientific basis whatsoever that it works. Now there is a new product, Kybella, which is the deoxycholic acid, which just came out that you inject. It's only been approved. That so you far. as a plastic surgeon inject. Right. Correct. Not ordering these not correct. vitamins. Now that has been shown to dissolve small areas of fat. What they're doing here, though. Yeah, see, this, this, no is, this kind of comes out of the weight loss clinic revolution. You know, there's weight loss clinics all over the world, and part of what they do is give you a B12 shot. But the problem is, if you're not B12 deficient, then getting a shot of B12 really isn't going to do much. So it's... Unless you buy into yeah, that's true. Unless that it's the mind over matter factor, which for some people... Mind is a powerful a thing. Very powerful thing. It really is. And so the, the one takeaway here is we've always said this. If you're going to supplement and you find that it's beneficial to you and you know it's doing no harm, then it's your money. It's your life. You, you do what you want. As long as you're not doing harm is the key takeaway. And just don't believe all these claims. Yeah, I agree completely, uh, especially with that last part. You know, it... If you feel like these products work for you, um, fine. Go ahead, go ahead and use them. And um, I don't think that there's anything, any ingredient in here, especially dose the way that it's generally dosed, that is necessarily going to cause you harm. The only harm is going to come to your wallet. Uh, but hey, if you want to go ahead and, and use this stuff, I, I actually, I mean, I don't have any strong objections to it. I am going to show you some of the science though that shows. Um, they, they, they don't work, in, in my opinion, and um, I, I try to talk guys out of using these. I've had a handful of guys that swear by them and they want to have them. I don't have a problem necessarily providing them, but um, I do my best to talk them out of it because I really don't, you know, I, I don't feel like there's much benefit to it. So what are the products that we're talking about? These are the, the two most common ones, and by the way, every single testosterone, you know, Medispa, quasi anti-aging clinic that I've ever come across with a, with a few small exceptions and certainly all the ones here in the local area, they all sell this stuff. And it's this lipo B and lipo C um, uh, injection stuff. So this is a aqueous format of uh, or formula of a variety of different compounds. So the lipo B, the B part of it stands for B12. And I think the lipo C, the C must stand for, for uh, L-carnitine, which they put into it. So the core of this is, because uh, you might also hear these called MIC injections, 
okay, which is methionine, inositol, and choline, which is the core, like, three ingredients that are in both of these. And then the different formulations, they might add in, like, a second or third ingredient into that to kind of make it special uh, or to charge you more money. So, so Lipo B, they have the MIC component of it, and then they add vitamin B12 to it. So Lipo B. Now, Lipo C also has the... Um, the MIC component, they add uh, carnitine, thymine, um, and dexpanethol, which we'll talk about that in a second. So they can charge you more money for that. Um, so these, you know, like I said, extremely popular. Every single clinic I've looked into um, offers these. And I have a, you know, this is just a, another example, I think, of, of snake oil and quackery that has made its way into this space. Um, that I think is unfortunate because, you know, I consider the field of age management to be a legitimate medical subspecialty, but unfortunately it's, it's flooded with a lot of, a lot of quackery. It's, uh, it seems to be a haven for alternative practitioners that like to hawk, uh, you know, various supplements and various other like treatment regimens that are, um, that are not evidence-based. Uh, they're quite expensive. And so, you know, it's, it's hard because the, I think that these, these folks give people uh, like myself who are trying to be evidence-based, who are trying to only provide services and charge money for, for services that I think are really going to help you, that, that are going to move the needle. Uh, but, you know, I understand these clinics have to keep the lights on, but um, I, I just, I personally think it's unethical to uh, try to push things like this onto patients when we know definitively that um, you know they, 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 that they don't work that they don't work so so I'm going to talk about these two products here uh, for a minute so uh, real quick I just want to give a shout out to the website examine.com um, I am not s sponsored by them by the way but I do have a membership there it's a great website um, that has a lot of evidence-based uh, material that you can look up uh, in terms of nutritional supplements and a, a variety of other things um, I use some of the information from that website to put this talk together for you guys. Okay, so let's run through the the, um, the ingredients real quick, and we'll start with methionine. So methionine, it's a branched chain amino acid. It's got a sulfur component. Um, you know, like many branched chain amino acids, it's used in a variety of different physiological processes throughout your body from your immune system. It's involved in lipid metabolism. Um, it's metabolized into something called S uh, adenosyl methionine or SAM, which you might see as a as a, a nutritional supplement. So your body converts methionine into SAM. Um, now SAM does have lipotropic properties, okay, meaning that it can be involved in uh, the burning of fat. That does not mean that taking excessive amounts of SAM is going to accelerate that process, okay? But it is involved in the fat burning process, and so that's why they put it into this into this compound. Uh, or into these into these injections. There's some suspect data out there that SAM or methionine itself might have some benefits in treating depression and arthritis and a variety of different liver conditions like fatty liver. Mainly those are in animals, um, but I haven't seen anything definitive um, on that at all. So um, yeah, we do know that low levels of SAM in your liver, it does cause triglyceride uh, or fat to accumulate in the liver. So potentially that could be contributing to fatty liver disease. But again, that's in people with deficiency. Um, there are no studies I could find that showing showed that supplementing extra methionine or SAM uh, in people that already had baseline normal levels did anything for fatty liver disease. I couldn't find a single study that showed it helped with weight loss, zero, okay? And by the way, if, if you find studies that I'm not aware of, feel free to send them to me, I'll, I'll take a look. Now the next one is choline, and um, so choline, um, choline does a lot of things. You you tend to, you need to get it from your diet for the most part. Your body makes a small amount of it, um, but it needs to be uh, primarily uh, obtained through through your diet. Um, let's see, choline it, it reduces oxidative stress. Um, it it may uh, prevent the accumulation of fat within the liver, again, in people that have a deficiency, not in people who are have normal levels or are supplemented with it. Um, 
it is obviously choline, you know, it's related to acetylcholine. It's metabolized into that, which is obviously a crucial neurotransmitter uh, for the brain. So you'll sometimes see choline. They might add choline into some of these neurotropic stacks. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, there may or may not be some, some data to support that. It's, uh, it's, highly, it's highly questionable. Now, in terms of studies in, uh, regarding fat loss, there's one study that I kept seeing brought out over and over and over again with choline. Uh, and ironically, it was on sites that happened to sell choline <laughs> or these lipo B uh, injections. And it was in these uh, group of female athletes. They were judo and taekwondo athletes, 22 of them. And they or orally supplemented choline for the one week before a competition. And they did show that they had um, a decrease in, uh, in body fat and a slight decrease in body weight. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. It was not very impressive. There's multiple flaws in this study. One being it's underpowered. 22 um, individuals is not, it's not a large study population by any means. And these are, these are women that were actively cutting weight for a competition. So it wasn't, they weren't just eating like maintenance calories. All of them were on a hypocaloric diet. So let's pull up. So this is the study here, uh, effective choline supplementation on rapid weight loss and biochemical variables among female Taekwondo and Judo athletes. So let's pick that apart a little bit. How much actual body fat that these, that these women lose in the one week while they were dieting. Um, so here, body fat percentage. So the control group had 18.5% uh, body fat. So automatically, these are very lean athletic women to begin with. These are not obese, sedentary females, which is the norm for the American population. Uh, the control group was 18.5, uh, experimental 18.7. So, you know, essentially the same. At the end of one week, the control group, Obviously, they lost body fat too, so they're actively dieting. They went from 18.5 to 17.7, we'll say 17.8. And then the experimental group went from 18.7 to 16.8. Um, so small amount of, of body fat loss there. This is a single study, underpowered, has a lot of issues with it. Um, but it has yet to be replicated. I, I searched far and wide and I could not find any other studies other than this one that showed a similar, uh, a similar effect. And um, so here we have uh, some commentary on that. There was um, you know, a, a subsequent study. Uh, it looked at the effect of six weeks of supplementation of either uh, 500 or 2,000 milligrams a day of uh, CDP, which is a version of choline. Um, they only used 16 women, uh, or sorry, adults, they're, they're men and women in this case. They were actually overweight though, so a more realistic population than our um, Taekwondo and Judo athletes. They had no, um, no, no, no change in body weight um, over the course of six weeks. And if you look through the literature, like go to PubMed, that's what you find. You find um, study after study that showed uh, essentially no effect. Um, or minimal uh, non-statistically significant effect of choline. So don't waste your time with choline. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about choline, this is a theoretical thing. Um, choline is metabolized into something called TMAO, tri trimethyl, um, trimethylamine. Uh, it's converted into trimethylamine and oxide in the liver. There's some, which is, also, which is called TMAO. TMAO in some animal models, they think could be pro-atherogenic, pro-thrombotic, meaning it could accelerate uh, atherosclerotic heart disease, perhaps lead to uh, blood clots. It's a theoretical risk. Uh, it's in some animal models. I'm not aware of any studies um, in, uh, in humans. Interestingly enough, right out of the package insert from one of these lipolytic injections, it says, quote, studies in animal models suggest that TMAO may be atherogenic and prothrombotic. Therefore, lipo-MIC injections are contraindicated in individuals with cardiovascular disorders. Uh, s adenosyl methionine may worsen the symptoms of mania, that's interesting, uh, in people with bipolar disorder. Consult a physician before use. There you go, right out of the package insert. Okay, next ingredient is uh, carnitine. This has been around forever. Like I remember in my, my early powerlifting days, like in the 90s, they were pushing carnitine supplements. Um, there may be some use for carnitine in other areas of, of health and men's fertility, but when it comes to fat loss, 
no, this is this is largely useless. Um, so carnitine, it's it's an essential ingredient in the transfer of um, like long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria, where then they are oxidized, and um, you know could be used to synthesize ATP, provide you with energy, etc. So you know. If, if it's used in fat burning, then taking more of it must be better, right? Wrong. So again, we're, we're talking about if you have normal levels of carnitine, you can't drive that reaction of fat oxidation any faster by loading up carnitine. It just, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so here's a study from the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism from 2000 in June. L-carnitine supplementation combined with aerobic training does not promote weight loss in moderately obese women. Yep. So the majority of studies show this. Now, in all fairness, there was a meta-analysis here in the uh, Journal of uh, Clinical Nutrition in 2020. They did a um, retrospective look. They did a meta-analysis. Sorry, they did a meta-analysis of 37 studies. Which, by the way, meta-analyses. If um, you know you're a research geek, this is some of the lowest quality evidence out there. Um, what they showed was that there was a small change in body weight, up to 1.2 kilograms, in uh, when they lumped all of these 37 studies together. Um, but here's the most important part: no significant effect was seen in waist circumference, which is a surrogate marker you think for fat loss, but no change in body fat percentage. So a 1.2 kilogram body weight change, but no change in body fat percentage, which is the whole purpose of taking this stuff. So, uh, so L-carnitine, I'm afraid, total bust. Uh, and Nositol, this is more crap that, <laughs> you know, like the old Weeder magazines and all the bodybuilding, you know, rags back in the 90s would push in Nositol, and then it kind of went away, and it you know comes back again like a lot of these things, you know, Tribulus and Boron and all this stuff that like. I literally saw this stuff being marketed when I was 17, 18 years old, and you know it just it just keeps coming back. So, um, inositol is a it's related it's structurally similar to glucose, but it acts as something called a second messenger, which is how cells communicate with each other within your body. Um, you know, going into any more detail is not necessary at this point, but we do know that you know having normal, healthy levels of inositol helps with insulin resistance. There are some studies showing that in women, obese women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, that it might help insulin sensitivity, which one is, is one of their fundamental problems. You know, and theoretically that could improve their symptoms, improve their um, fertility, et cetera. When it comes to weight loss, there are no studies um, in, uh, in men and no studies that involve women who don't have polycystic ovarian syndrome that show any evidence for weight loss of any kind. So inositol for weight loss, total waste of time. Now um, let's move on to dexpanthenol. Dexpanthenol. It's funny that they use this long, they, they're using the biochemical name for vitamin B5. And I think they do that just because it sounds more medical. But this is vitamin B5, okay? B vitamins are super important. Um, B5 is uh, related to, um, well, it's like a host of different functions in the, uh, in the Krebs cycle. Yeah, it can be uh, important in lipid metabolism. But um, as they mentioned out of uh, examine.com, uh, it says, while it is important, meaning it's important physiologically to have normal levels, it is rare to be deficient, 100% true. Further supplementation shows a little promise. Yeah, and they look through uh, you know all the studies on this stuff, and not just for fat loss, but taking additional vitamin B five if you already have you know normal dietary intake, zero additional fat loss from from taking this stuff. Okay, next one is thiamine. Um, again, thiamine is super important. This is another B vitamin, vitamin B one. Again, um, deficiency is pretty rare. I see it um, occasionally in the emergency department. Um, you know, mainly in like severe chronic alcoholics, people who are otherwise you know severely malnourished, elderly people who are shut-ins, that kind of stuff. So it uh, it actually is is relevant to my emergency room practice. Um, but you know, in people who have a normal, even a crappy Western diet, it's kind of rare to be thiamine deficiency. Uh, a lot of foods are fortified uh, with thiamine. Uh, not a single study shows that taking excess thiamine um, has any benefit whatsoever when it comes to fat loss. So. Um, you know, it, incidentally, this is on my boards quite a bit because if you're severely thiamine deficient, 
uh, like a chronic alcoholic, and uh, you can develop something called Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, which I'm not going to get into right now. I've seen it a handful of times in, in my career, but um, I see it most commonly on my board exams. <laughs> All right, and then finally, B12. I'm not going to get into the details on B12 because I've talked about it before. Uh, it's very important uh, for a neuro your neurological system, for your uh, for muscle, uh, for muscle tissue, for your brain. Absolutely no evidence to support that injecting vitamin B12 or taking oral B12 in a person who already has a normal B12 level, B12 level will accelerate fat loss. Not a single study shows benefit. So um, it's, in my opinion, a complete waste of time. So there you have it. That's the ingredients in these. Um, guys, you know, I have, a, I have a little bit of heartburn about, I question people who, and by, by people, I mean physicians, you know, naturopaths, uh, PAs, nurse practitioners that, that try to push this stuff on patients. Um, the data is very clear on this stuff, that, it's, that it is almost certainly worthless in terms of burning additional fat above and beyond what you would burn with diet, exercise, and hormonal optimization. So that leaves me with just two conclusions. One if your doctor slash provider is is pushing this stuff on you they either a don't read the medical literature and therefore uh are uh, have a questionable knowledge base um, in this area or two they know this stuff doesn't work and they push it on you because they're trying to make money i if you have a third option let me know um but that's that's the way i look at this stuff so um you know, in the beginning in that doctor's um, video, I think he said it was something like two shots for $75 or whatever it was. I, I don't remember what it was. But, um, you know, many clinics will charge uh, like $25 for one shot of this stuff, which is usually like one cc. I have seen clinics that um, when guys would come in for their testosterone injection, they would just mix up the testosterone with an ML of this lipo B or lipo C stuff, and then they would give them in the injection once a week for guys that wanted to come to the clinic to do it, um, and they would charge them like twenty-five to thirty-five extra dollars for that. Um, guys, this stuff. This, if I wanted to order this stuff from a compounding pharmacy, I could get it is dirt cheap. You know, I could get a, a, a ten cc vial of this for like thirty to thirty-five dollars. And um, so if they're charging $25 per cc, each bottle, they're, they're, that's 250 bucks that they're making off of a bottle of vitamins and other dubious compounds that cost them about 30 to $35. So nice big fat markup. So th these are money makers. It's no wonder that they push this stuff, but you know, it's, th this is quackery in, in my opinion. Um, and again, I, I'll go back to what I said beginning in the beginning and what those guys you know said on the show. If you feel it helps you, um, fine, go, go ahead and take it. You know, it's not like ridiculously expensive. Certainly, it's cheaper than Kybella, which the plastic surgeon was was trying to get you to do. Um, but um, you know, just keep in mind the studies do not support its use. Um, there's very likely to be a strong placebo effect. But at the end of the day, you know, I've taken a CC of this stuff every week or so, or every two weeks, whatever the case may be, is something that you want to do. I think it's unlikely to harm you. Um, so, you know, I'll leave it up to you. I, I don't endorse this stuff. I don't push it on patients. I don't recommend it. Um, but again, if, if, you've, if you've had good results with it, let me know. Uh, if you have poor results with it, let me know. If you're aware of any studies that have specifically looked at the combination of MIC plus or minus any of these other ingredients in a well done randomized placebo controlled fashion, please let me know. I scoured the medical literature to the best of my ability to find uh, studies with these particular concoctions all together. I couldn't find a single one. So, um, you know, but hey, maybe I overlooked something. So if you're aware of something, please let me know. That's all I have for you guys today. I'm sorry, you are still gonna have to diet. You're still gonna have to exercise. You're still gonna get your hormones optimized. Uh, there's no magic shots to burn fat. Sorry guys. All right, take care. All man medicine video and audio has been created and shared online for informational purposes only. This podcast does not constitute the practice of medicine or professional healthcare services of any kind. 
including the giving of medical advice. I am not your doctor. No doctor-patient relationship has been established. This content is not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied upon solely for that purpose either. The only purpose of this content is to present peer-reviewed, research-backed health information for your consideration. As always, rely on the advice and guidance of your personal physician before undertaking any activity presented here, and if in doubt or not comfortable with said activity, practice discretion. Your health is your responsibility and not ours. Finally, I take conflicts of interest seriously. I accept no compensation whatsoever from any private corporations, including pharmaceutical or supplement companies. You can trust that if I recommend a medication, product, or service, it's because I genuinely believe in it and not because I'm being paid to endorse it.